Happy New Year from us here at Time to Football. Putting up a new calendar means that postseason football is right around the corner. Which teams could surprise us as dark horses in the playoffs in their row to Super Bowl 55 down in Tampa? Dwayne Haskins has officially been released. What does this mean for the future of the Washington football team? Week 17 news and notes going into Sunday's games and much more on a brand new episode, the very first episode of Time to Football of 2021. Hello everyone, my name is Hassan Khan, the host of this show. You are joining us on this Friday if you guys are premiering this video on YouTube. I know it's Friday, I threw you guys off, I did not expect to release this video on Friday. If you kept up with us on YouTube, in the comment sections, uh, under the community tab, I posted that I came down with a stomach bug on Monday, so I had to push everything back a, a day or two, just kind of delay everything. Uh, so the ads and drops videos, that's why I didn't release that this week. Came out with the starts and sits, but that was a day late on Wednesday, and so the podcast got pushed back to Friday because of that. So with all that said, regardless, I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm probably 80 85% right now. Enough energy to talk about some uh, some football and get through this episode and finish out the regular season. It's crazy to think that uh, 2020 is over. We needed that year to be over, but it's crazy to think that the regular season is coming to an end uh, so quickly, uh, and, and it's going to be ending all in one day on Sunday. All these games are going to be happening in just one singular day. We're going to get you caught up on all the drama and all the playoff scenarios as well and all the news and notes going into this week. If you guys are premiering this on uh, this wonderful Friday. How you guys doing? I'm going to be joining you guys in the chat as well. Ask any sort of questions that you may have. It's the Fantasy Football Championship for some of you. Most of you guys ended your seasons in Week 16. Because Week 17, it just doesn't make a lot of sense for a lot of guys to play fantasy football if a lot of players are being sat. For instance, Patrick Mahomes, uh, which could mean Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, Ben Roethlisberger is not going to play. Uh, there's rumors out there that Josh Allen may play, he may not play. And a lot of guys that made the championship, you probably have Josh Allen or even Stephon Diggs. So there's just a lot of question marks surrounding Week 17. So I encourage you guys, if you're the commissioner of your league, or if you can just reach out to the commissioner of your fantasy football league, please tell them next year, do not play a championship on Week 17. Just end it. End it Week 16. Everybody will be happy. It makes a lot of sense. But if you are playing in Week 17, ask any sort of questions that you may have, and I'll try my best to respond to you guys. If you guys are listening to us on the audio experience, uh, rate and review this podcast. Be sure to head over to YouTube, youtube.com slash time to football, and subscribe to us on there. We're going to get into the podcast and all the topics that we have for you guys. But first, before we get into everything, you know what we have to do every single week. We have to give the most prestigious award to a player every single week, and that is the hungriest player of the week. Hungriest player of the week, the one that wanted it the most. My hungriest player of the week, not the checkdowns, even though more than likely it's probably going to be given to the same player, and that is Alvin Kamara of the New Orleans Saints. Who else can you give it to? Other than the guy from just in my backyard in Gwinnett County from Norcross High School, Alvin Kamara, 22 carries, 155 yards, and six total touchdowns in that fabulous Christmas Day game against the Minnesota Vikings. What an amazing thing that the NFL did. Had an amazing historic day, Alvin Kamara did, as in terms of fantasy football goes, in terms of record tying production. And then they decide to uh, fine him 5000 bucks because of his green and red cleats that he wore that was against his dress code. Uh, so congratulations, NFL. That's amazing. But that six touchdowns does tie an NFL record that someone set uh, back in the 1920s. Could have been a record-setting performance by Alvin Kamara if he just got seven touchdowns. Just seven touchdowns against the Minnesota Vikings. He was so close. The Saints were on the goal line prior to his sixth touchdown. He could have gotten his sixth touchdown in the third quarter, but something about Sean Payton and his man crush with Taysom Hill decided to give him the goal line carry, and that just cost Alvin Kamara that, that record touchdown, that seventh touchdown, but that's okay. Alvin Kamara, great performance, deserving of the Hungriest Player of the Week award. 
Week 17 news and notes around the NFL. A lot to talk about with the playoff scenarios, which we're going to get into in just a bit. But first, the biggest news across the league has to be that Washington's football team, the Washington football team, released Dwayne Haskins, their starting quarterback, their number one overall pick back in 2019, no longer on the football team. It's been released after some, uh, obviously his performance has been struggling and as well as uh, some character issues as well. And he was being stripped of his captain badge just last week and it just wasn't the right fit. So we're going to dive much more into that later on once we get into the topics of the show. But Dwayne Haskins has been released. A big, big name for the Green Bay Packers, David Bakhtiari, their tackle, has suffered a season-ending ACL injury in practice just yesterday in Thursday's practice. So he's going to be out for the remainder of the season. That's big news for the offensive line and protecting Aaron Rodgers. So let's see how the Packers can respond to that. Activated off the COVID-19 list, those four wide receivers of the Cleveland Browns that they missed so much last week in that loss against the New York Jets, Jarvis Landry, Rashad Higgins, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Kadero Hodge have all been activated off the COVID-19 list. Another big name that's been activated for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and eligible to, to play this Sunday, that is Ronald Jones. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers running back will be getting the start over Leonard Fournette against the Atlanta Falcons. Has been missing the last couple of games. Placed on that COVID-19 list, so they will not be playing this Sunday, that is Keenan Allen, Cooper Cup, Jalen Mills, the defensive back of the Philadelphia Eagles, Denzel Ward of the Cleveland Browns, Michael Brockers on the Rams, Ryan Fitzpatrick, the quarterback on the Dolphins, and Brett Kern, the punter on the Titans, who the Titans have dealt with so many special teams issues. All of these big names are now placed on the COVID-19 list. More than likely, they're going to be messing this week, this Sunday's uh, games of action. And for those teams that are going into the playoffs, those players are in doubt and uh, of missing probably their first round of, uh, of playoff games as well. So those are the, some big names that are placed on that COVID-19 list. Some non-COVID-19 inactive. So these are players that weren't placed on the COVID-19 list, but probably injured that are going to be sitting out or probably just resting because our team is already locking up their seed. That is Dalvin Cook, unfortunately going to be missing this week because of uh, some family tragedy. His father passed away. Uh, Christian McCaffrey. I'm sorry for you guys that drafted Christian McCaffrey in fantasy football. Uh, I would put him up there next to Saquon Barkley as the biggest draft bust this year. Only had three games of production. When he played those three games, he was productive, and it was amazing. But... He is now going to be sitting out. And so his, his his backup, Mike Davis, is not going to be playing as well. Uh, and James Robinson, another big name running back, will be missing this game as well against the Indianapolis Colts, out with an ankle injury. Kenny Galladay, just like the same route as Christian McCaffrey, you thought he was going to be coming back sooner than, he, than what we thought, but it turns out that they just shut him out for the rest of the season. He's going to be finishing the, the season with only a couple games under his belt, so Kenny Galladay will be missing... Uh, week 17 against the Minnesota Vikings. Some players that have been sitting out because the coaches elected to rest them, Patrick Mahomes, will not be playing. No word has been said about Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill, but those are two big names that we expect to be sitting as well. Adrian Peterson, the Lions running back, doesn't want to be a part of the Lions rebuild. He's 35 years old. He wants to be a part of a championship team. This late in his career, he's still expected to be playing in his head at least if he gets an offer from an NFL team, wants to be part of a championship team. So let's see what happens for Adrian Peterson in the 2021 offseason. And then the last uh, note I want to bring up before we talk about the playoff scenarios, Kyle Trask, the Florida quarterback, the Heisman finalist, announces and declares for the NFL draft. So he will be uh, drafted this year in the 2021 NFL draft. Kyle Trask, Heisman finalist from Florida. Looking at the playoff scenarios, let's first start off with the NFC. A lot of clinching scenarios. First, talking about the Green Bay Packers, the New Orleans Saints, and the Seattle Seahawks. The three guaranteed uh, number three seeds. All three teams are eligible to clinch that first round by. Green Bay, what has to happen? They have to win or Seattle has to lose. New Orleans, they have to win. Plus, Green Bay has to lose. Plus, Seattle has to win. For Seattle, they have to win. Plus, Green Bay has to lose. And New Orleans has to lose. A lot of different scenarios with that three-way tie with those top three seeds. The Washington football team can clinch the NFC East division title, the dreaded NFC East, 
if they were to win against the Philadelphia Eagles. That's all that needs to happen. Now, if they were to lose, then they're eliminated because the winner of the Dallas and the New York Giants game would get the nod as the NFC East champion. you got the Rams, the Bears, and the Cardinals all fighting for those two wildcard spots. For the Rams, they need to win or Chicago needs to lose. For Chicago, they need to win or Arizona needs to lose. As for Arizona, they have the toughest route to the NFC playoffs. They have to win and they have to hope that Chicago were to lose as well. As far as the AFC goes, very competitive for the Tennessee Titans. They clinched the the AFC South with a win against the Houston Texans or if Indianapolis loses against the Jacksonville Jaguars. So it's a little bit easier for them. For the Colts, they need to hope that the Titans were to lose and that the Colts were to win. Now, if the Colts were to win and the Titans were to win, that's okay. The Colts still have a chance of making the playoffs if the other 10-5 teams, at least one of them, were to lose. That includes the Dolphins, the Browns, and the Ravens, all 10-5. So all these teams need to win because you never know what's going to happen with those other teams and the fate of them if either one of them is going to go 11-5 or 10-6. So all of them are hoping for a win this Sunday. But that's kind of the... uh, Crazy scenarios that we have for the playoff race in the AFC and the NFC. Dwayne Haskins has officially been released by the Washington football team. He ends his tenure with the team starting 13 games, throwing for 12 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. Head coach Ron Rivera stated this past Monday that he did what was for the best interest of the team. After some bad performances on the field, yes, but more than likely coming down to the decision because of some bad character choices on the part of Haskins. So what does Haskins' release mean for Washington's future? First off, first off, before we answer that, I want to address something. I think we all owe New York, talking about the Giants, an apology. An apology. When when Daniel Jones was drafted over Dwayne Haskins in the 2019 draft at number six overall, The backlash, the criticism, people flipped out. People couldn't fathom it. People didn't understand. Why would you take Jones over Haskins, who people are saying is the better quarterback? And we just criticized the Giants for so long, and it turns out the Giants were right in their decision. They knew exactly what they were doing. They know more about the situation than we did. So we owe them an apology. Here's the thing about NFL drafts, mock drafts especially. There's only 5 to 10 people total that actually do hours and hours and hours of research on every single player to come out with a mock draft. And what we do, as far as the thousands and thousands of people go, is we read these articles posted by these 5 to 10 people, these mock drafts, and I'm talking about people from ESPN like Mel Kuyper or Todd McShay. And I'm talking about people from NFL.com like Bucky Brooks or Daniel Jeremiah or Mike Mayock prior to him being on the Raiders. And then we come up with our own opinions on, oh, this team is going to draft this player because of what five to ten people say. And so that whenever someone else has a different opinion, we say, oh, you're dumb, you're wrong, you're stupid because of an opinion that actually hasn't happened yet. That's what we do. That's what we did with the Daniel Jones situation. That's what happens all the time. Every year I come out with a mock draft on this YouTube channel. And I say, okay, I think that this team is going to pick this player. And if just one person disagrees, someone says, no, that's factually inaccurate. Even though it hasn't happened yet, it's an opinion. It's okay. There's no such thing as a wrong opinion. And that's exactly what we did with Daniel Jones and Dwayne Haskins. We thought that since these 5 to 10 people and that thousands and thousands of people were reading the opinions of these 5 to 10 people were coming out saying, yeah, Haskins is better than Daniel Jones and the the Giants should draft Dwayne Haskins. We immediately thought through our head, yeah, that means Haskins is better than Daniel Jones. That's a fact. And that there's no other logical choice but to get Dwayne Haskins. When in reality, the Giants knew exactly what they were doing and avoiding Dwayne Haskins. 
and avoiding the lack of productions that he's had because in his NFL career so far, when you want to compare the two, yeah, Daniel Jones has had some trouble with turnovers here and there, but so far, as far as offensive production goes, it's been Daniel Jones that has been better on the football field than Dwayne Haskins. Dodge the bullet with Dwayne Haskins. There are several teams interested in Haskins, according to multiple reports, one of those being the Carolina Panthers. That's the only team that's been revealed that has shown interest in Dwayne Haskins. A lot of that could be attributed to, yeah, Teddy Bridgewater isn't your long-term solution. You want to just go ahead and grab a player with some long-term upside if he were to turn things around, if we were to get his act together. That could be the route for Dwayne Haskins. But as far as the Washington football team, what do they do now now that they don't have a quote-unquote franchise quarterback, now that Alex Smith is getting up there in age is not going to be your long-term solution. You have no one really else on your roster that could step up as a franchise quarterback. What route do they take? You have to think about Washington looking at the NFL draft if you want to draft a quarterback for the future. But here's a tricky situation for the Washington football team. The NFC East is so bad that if they were to win this division this Sunday, they would get in the 20s and up as far as a draft draft pick goes, and they wouldn't have a good pick in landing a solid franchise quarterback, one of the better touted quarterbacks this upcoming draft. 20 and up means that you're going to miss out on guys like Trey Lance. means that you're going to miss out on guys like Justin Fields, like Zach Wilson, like Mac Jones. Currently, they hold the 19th pick. The 19th pick. So for the draft, unless you trade a lot of draft capital, unless you trade up, it's almost unrealistic to get a solid first round top five, top 10 quarterback in the NFL draft that you can consider, yeah, this is my franchise quarterback moving forward. Another route that they can do because of that is go down the free agent route. And you could bring in a veteran. That's a, that's what free agency is for, is bringing in a bridge quarterback. Like some quarterbacks that are going to be free agents that are up there in age this year. There's Phillip Rivers. I don't think the team wants to bring in Phillip Rivers, given that they have an, another aging quarterback in Alex Smith. Maybe you go down the route of getting a younger quarterback in free agency. Maybe someone like Dak Prescott. It's possible. The Cowboys may elect to not sign him to a long-term deal following his injury, even though Stephen Jones, the vice president of the Cowboys, has stated that Prescott is their long-term solution. He's been saying that for the last couple of years, but just keeps on signing him to the, to the franchise tag, so there's no guarantee that he's going to be the future of that franchise. Could he go over to a division rival in Washington to be their starting quarterback and their franchise quarterback for the foreseeable future? If not, I understand. He's a lot of money. That's okay. Another big young name quarterback that could become a free agent this season, Mitchell Trubisky, could be in the market to sign with other NFL teams after the lack of success that he's been having with the Chicago Bears in the broad sense. I know as of the last three, four weeks or so, the Bears have really turned it around because Trubisky has been their quarterback. But in the broad sense, they could elect to move on with Trubisky, not pick up his fifth-year option, and that could open the window for Washington to swoop in and sign Trubisky as a potential franchise quarterback. But what do you guys believe is going to happen with Washington in the future? Do you believe that they're going to go down the route of signing someone like Dak Prescott or Mitch Trubisky in free agency? Or do you think that they're going to really focus in and hone in on the NFL draft? Leave your comments down below. Every now and then in the postseason, you get those teams that surprise us. For the New York Giants in 2007, a wild card team went on to beat the undefeated New England Patriots. The Baltimore Ravens, led by Joe Flacco in 2012, a wild card team. The Green Bay Packers in 2010, a wild card team. The Tennessee Titans last year were playing in the wild card round, defeated the New England Patriots, defeated the Baltimore Ravens, and were kind of close to reaching the Super Bowl and beating the Kansas City Chiefs. Every year you get surprise teams, it seems like. The question is, this year, who's going to be that team that's going to be surprising us? Who is the dark horse that a lot of people aren't really talking about and making a run at the Super Bowl 
that could really have a legitimate chance of making it down in Tampa. In the AFC and in the NFC, there are several teams that we wanted to talk about. I went through all the teams that are a little bit less known or not so much covered in the media or not really talked about. So this doesn't include teams like Green Bay or New Orleans or the Kansas City Chiefs or even the Pittsburgh Steelers or the Buffalo Bills. Obviously, those teams are the quote-unquote favorites. But this includes teams like the, the Tennessee Titans or maybe the Miami Dolphins and teams of that nature. So I went through and I picked five teams, my top five teams that could be potential dark horses for the NFL playoffs. Now, granted, this is week 17, prior to week 17. So there's no guarantee that any of these teams have clinched just yet. But just keep that in mind that these teams are in position to clinch. If the playoffs were to start today, they would be in the NFL playoffs. So starting off with the number five team, I have the LA Rams as a potential dark horse. Not really talk about that much, even though they are a pretty decent football team. They sit at nine and six. I had them ranked higher originally. I had them at number four, but I had to drop them down a spot because they're kind of dependent on Jared Goff and his status and his thumb injury. Some are saying that it's season ending because he had to have thumb surgery. So a lot of people are saying, yeah, he could be just missing the remainder of the NFL season, but we just don't know yet because they haven't announced it. They haven't placed him on IR just yet. They have hope that he could return for the NFL playoffs. Tough dude, by the way. If you caught that shot of him, the Fox cameras caught that, him dislocating his thumb, but then popping it back into place and finishing the game. Man, that takes a lot of guts for his throwing hand as well. But John Wolford is going to be starting for the LA Rams in the time being, in the interim, until Jared Goff can get healthy. So that's why they're the number five dark horse. I would have them ranked higher, but... I don't know. I know their defense is really good, and they can lead the way. Cam Akers is the number one back if he can get healthy in time for the playoffs. But it's all dependent on Jared Goff. Now, if the playoffs were to start today, they would face the Seattle Seahawks. They beat them once already, 23-16 to in the first time that they met up prior to last week. But, again, Jared Goff is a difference maker on that team. So, number five, the LA Rams. Number four, an AFC team, the Miami Dolphins. Listen, they've already exceeded expectations this season. Why not just give them a chance for the NFL playoffs? We kept on doubting them all season long. And now this time around for the playoffs, I'm not sure if you want to continue to doubt them. In my opinion, this is all dependent on Ryan Fitzpatrick. I understand what Brian Flores is doing. Give Tua Tagovailoa some experience. He's your future. I understand that. But production-wise... Fitzpatrick has been the better quarterback. Let's give Fitzpatrick a shot. So for Brian Flores, I think that Fitzpatrick would be the best option. Now, if the season were to end today, they would be in the NFL playoffs. They would be the number five seed. And they would face the Tennessee Titans. The Titans are slight favorites over the Miami Dolphins. But the Dolphins, again, could be a dark horse just because of how they just continue to defy expectations. We thought that their defense was going to get run over all season long. We thought that this offense was still not going to be as productive. Turns out they're going to have a shot at making the NFL postseason. So the Miami Dolphins, my number four, dark horse. Number three, the Tennessee Titans. The team that, speaking of facing the Dolphins, the Tennessee Titans, the slight favorites over the Dolphins. So that's why I had them ranked at number three. I said the Dolphins at number four. Great offense would be ranked higher if it weren't for that defense. We didn't expect this defense to be as bad this season, but somehow, some way, we find themselves not really being as good as we expected. They're ten and five despite the, the the lack of success on that defense, and a lot of that has to be accredited to that great offense. Derrick Henry just continues to run over people every single week. Ryan Tannehill never missed a beat. Last year was not a fluke. It turns out he actually is a very good quarterback and he is doing really well for the Tennessee Titans and that is why they find themselves in position to win the AFC South this Sunday against the Houston Texans. Now this team is considered a dark horse and they did so well last season. They were a dark horse last year as well against the New England Patriots on the road in Foxborough, against the Baltimore Ravens on the road in Baltimore and against 
the Kansas City Chiefs, even though they lost that game for a good amount of time for at least the first half in contention of winning that game or had a shot of at least pulling off an upset and making the Super Bowl because of the culture of that team. Mike Vrabel, a lot of people are saying, a lot of players are saying, including Taylor Lewan and so many others, are saying that the culture in that Tennessee team, something about it, it's just different. It's something about them can push them and wanting to win and wanting to make the Super Bowl down in Tampa. So the Tennessee Titans are my number three dark horse team for the NFL postseason. Number two, a team that's just not really talked about that much, the Baltimore Ravens. I don't understand why. Even though they are going to make the postseason, even though they have a very good team, not really talked about it as much. But the Baltimore Ravens are considered a dark horse because Lamar Jackson, the beginning half of the season, look, maybe you just needed some time to just catch up with this offense or this offense needed to get his act together. But now he's starting to come alive in the second half of the season. Hollywood Brown, Marquise Brown is starting to come alive as well. Complaining about not getting enough targets. What's the matter or what's the point of having soldiers if you're not going to use them? Tweeted that out and now they evolve in the offense every single time. The defense has declined slightly. Their secondary has not been as good in the first half of the season or compared to the first half of the season, but they're still talented. They're still one of the best defenses in the NFL. So a good offense, that's really turning it around, and a good defense as well makes them my number two dark horse. If the season were to start today, they would face the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, there's no guarantee that the Baltimore Ravens are going to make the playoffs just yet, but if it started today, they would face the Steelers. And they had some uh, pretty rough games against the Steelers. Almost picked up one victory in that the, the start of that skid for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So they have a shot at pulling out the upset against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So that was with RG3 and Trace McSorley at quarterback. So who's to say that Lamar Jackson at quarterback now with a new improved offense is not going to be any better. So the Baltimore Ravens, my number two dark horse. My number one team that could be a dark horse, a lot of people would say that, hey, they're the favorites or they're one of the better teams. They're in contention of getting a, a first round buy. How do you consider them a dark horse? Well, that's because a lot of people just aren't really talking about them. People are sleeping on them because of the lack of production that they've had on offense in the second half of the season. But I say that the Seattle Seahawks are, are up there for being dark horses in the NFL playoffs. Listen, I understand that Russell Wilson losing his MVP candidacy uh, to Aaron Rodgers or even Patrick Mahomes. A lot of people are saying, well, okay, because of that, because the offense hasn't been looking that great because Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf has have declined as well. Yeah, I mean, Seattle Seahawks, can't really give them a shot. Can't really talk about them, but I'm here to tell you, yeah, go ahead and give them a shot. Russell Wilson, even though the lack of production that he's been having, is still one of the more reliable quarterbacks that you will find in that NFL playoff race. The offense has cooled down a bit, but guess what has uh, has been red hot as of late and has gotten better? The Seattle Seahawks defense. And it was kind of projected that after the first half of the NFL season that this defense has had, that Pete Carroll and this team and this coaching staff was going to do everything that they can to focus in on this defense and get them much better. So even though the offense hasn't been looking that great, the reason why they're 11-4, and four, a big reason has to do with that Seattle Seahawks defense and how they've really stepped it up. So the Seahawks, we don't know if they're going to get a first round bye just yet or if they're going to face the number six seed if they are the number three seed. But what we do know is that the Seahawks should be considered legitimate contenders to make a Super Bowl run. So to recap, the five dark horse playoff teams I have that could make a run for the Super Bowl and surprise us, number five, the LA Rams. Number four, the Miami Dolphins. Number three, the Tennessee Titans. Number two, the Baltimore Ravens. And number one, the Seattle Seahawks. All five dark horses in the NFL playoffs. If you guys have other names or other teams that you guys wanted to mention, interact with us. Comment down below and let us know who those teams are. We're going to kind of wrap up this podcast just because I mentioned in the beginning of the show I had a uh, stomach bug, still recovering from that, so don't want to make this too long. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up with fantasy football questions. Listen, we mentioned that this is still a thing. Fantasy football is still a thing in week 17, and I encourage you guys, reach out to your commissioners and encourage them to stop 
making the championship in week 17. It does not make any sense. Oh, it doesn't make any sense. A lot of you guys made the championship because of Josh Allen, because of Patrick Mahomes, because of Ben Roethlisberger, because of Stephon Diggs. Now they're going to be sitting, more than likely. I feel for you. I really do. But I'm going to choose six questions and answer them on this show. First off, from Edgar Chavez. So you're saying I should start Lamar Jackson over Josh Allen this week? Yes, 100%. Because, listen, Josh Allen was my bust of the week in that sorts and sets video. I love Josh Allen. I would have never said that he's going to be a, a bust of the week ever. But we don't know if he's going to play or not. We still don't know. Sean McDermott, the Bills head coach, has stated that we don't know until the game or, or game time. When it comes down to the decision, we're going to find out. So if they play their starters against the Miami Dolphins, if they really want to clinch that number two seed, sure, they could play them. But I doubt that they're going to play them for so long. Maybe just the first quarter, maybe even the second quarter, take them out at halftime. Because you have nothing to lose. You already made the NFL playoffs. And if you lose out of the number two seed and you get the number three seed, that's okay. Because the teams that you face... If you're the number two seed or number three seed, it's not that big of a difference. You're going to face one of those 10 to 5 teams, whether it be the Dolphins, the Ravens, the Browns, the Colts, whoever it may be. It, there's just not much to play for. So Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs, any of those Bills starters, I'm going to pass on them. I'm not going to take any risks. I'm going to take a guy like Lamar Jackson who's going to have to play all four quarters to guarantee that his team has a shot at making the NFL postseason. So Lamar Jackson over Josh Allen. Chad Boyer states, championship week, no Tyreek Hill, no Travis Kelsey, or Keenan Allen. Oh my gosh. Pick two for running back, Zeke, Gallman, or Chris Carson. Okay, so Tyreek and Travis Kelsey are because of uh, the Chiefs electing to rest of starters. Keenan Allen was placed on that COVID-19 list. Pick two running backs, Zeke, Gallman, or Chris Carson. I'm going to ride it out with Zeke. Man, if you drafted a number three overall in the NFL uh, fantasy football draft, but more than likely over uh, or behind Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley, just ride with him. Just do. It, uh, Tony Pollard has really stepped up and taken some carries away from Ezekiel Elliott, but he's still the featured back and the potential that he has to put up RB1 numbers, especially in the last game of the season when they just really are competing for the, the NFC East title and they want to bring their, their guns out, their big guns out, and uh, get all their star players to carries. Yeah, play Ezekiel Elliott. And then over that, I'm going to play Chris Carson over Wayne Gallman because the the dip in production that Gallman has been having, it's been because of game script, because the Giants have been having to play from behind against the Cleveland Browns and then last week against the Baltimore Ravens. But that does kind of scare me and worry me a bit that I wouldn't put him as a must-start at least I would put him as a sleeper. So someone that could surprise us and could do well as a sleeper running back because of the matchup that he has. But Chris Carson is guaranteed to get those touches for the Seattle Seahawks. Had six and carries last week is clearly the number one back for Seattle and is a guy that's going to be playing all four quarters because the Seattle Seahawks want to clinch that first round bye. So Zeke and Chris Carson are my two options. Armand Sood. Tannehill or Cousins at quarterback. I feel like the Titans are going to run Henry all over the Texans, which is why I'm leaning towards Cousins, especially with Cook out. I understand the logic, and I have both as must-starts. It's tough. It's tough. Cousins has been looking really good as of late. Tannehill, on the other hand, last week was kind of disappointing against the Green Bay Packers. The Houston Texas defense is not that great at all. If you want to uh, fact-check that, and want some evidence of that, check Brandon Allen's stats. The Cincinnati quarterback uh, in fantasy football last week put up 23 fantasy points against the Houston Texans. So I'm going to put in Tannehill just because of that. Cousins, yes, he's been looking great, but because of Cook out, who knows? Maybe the opposing team, maybe the Detroit Lions are going to be playing against the pass and really focusing on that now that Dalvin Cook is out, not really trying to stop the run as much because your star player is out. So Cousins could not do as well as maybe Ryan Tannehill. Plus, Ryan Tannehill has the rushing upside as well, so I'm going to go ahead and stick with Tannehill over Cousins. Tie to Bear 13, I see you commenting a lot. Time to football. 
Brady, Tannehill, or Herbert at quarterback? Ooh, good question. I'm going to stick with Tannehill over this. I really am. I understand uh, Brady against the Atlanta Falcons. Listen, the first half against the Atlanta Falcons, the first time that they faced this season, did not look that great. And for a second, I actually had Brady as a, as a sleeper of the week in that sorts and sits video. And when I was watching that first half against the Atlanta Falcons, I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I feel stupid for putting him as a sleeper of the week. And then he had that amazing second half and came back because the Falcons love to blow leads. Uh, but I'm not going to put in Brady over Tannehill just because the Atlanta Falcons defense still has those games here and there where the defense does look that great. Yes, I have both Brady and Tannehill as must starts, but I'm going to be going with a safer pick in Ryan Tannehill, knowing that the Houston Texans defense is much worse, much worse than the Atlanta Falcons defense. So I'm going to pick with, uh, or I'm going to stick with Ryan Tannehill. And over Justin Herbert as well. I didn't really talk about him just because Keenan Allen is going to be missing this game as well. I understand Mike Williams might be stepping up, but it, it's got to be uh, Tannehill over any of those two. Aspen asks, pick one, Robbie Anderson, Michael Gallup, or Mike Williams. Speaking of Mike Williams, number one wide receiver. Makes sense if you want to start him. Now that Keenan Allen is out, I wouldn't say that he's a bad flex spot in 12 to 14 team leagues. Yeah, you could flex Mike Williams. But if you want to pick between Robbie Anderson or Michael Gallup, are you in a PPR league? Because if you are, I'm going to go with Robbie Anderson, who had seven receptions just last week. It seems like this whole season he's been getting a lot of receptions. So in PPR leagues, I'm going to go with Robbie Anderson. Michael Gallup has been getting that connection with, with Andy Dalton as of late. But with three different receivers on that team with Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, and Michael Gallup having to share the love and spread the love, Robbie Anderson just having to split it with uh, DJ Moore and even Curtis Samuel. DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel aren't that big of a threat to Robbie Anderson as much as Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb are to Michael Gallup, if that makes any sense. So Anderson is going to be my choice. Uh, Let's do one more. Lewis Ryan Cepeda. Is the Eagles defense still a start without Fletcher Cox? Yes. Yeah. That Washington offense is is not the greatest. I think Antonio, fact check this for me. I think Antonio Gibson might be coming back this week and might be playing. So that could help a lot. But you'd expect that this defense would be playing against the run and really stacking up the box because they know that Taylor Heineke is going to be the starting quarterback for the Washington football team. That's not taking anything away from Taylor Heineke. Now, I graduated the same year as him. We grew up in the same county. We went to Collins Hill High School and went to Archer High School. Gwinnett County, shout out. But Taylor Heineke, I am rooting for him. He's my guy. But I, I don't see him really doing as well against the Philadelphia Eagles offense, just given that uh, this isn't... He hasn't had a lot of starts underneath his belt. Has only had one career start so far. Yeah, I would start the Eagles defense over the Washington, uh, or against the Washington football offense. But that's going to wrap up this week's edition of Time to Football. If you guys were so gracious enough to premiere this video as we are showing you on Friday, spending your Friday night with us, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date when we come up with more videos every single week. Believe it or not, we come out with much more content, amazing content throughout the week than just fantasy football. So you guys want to stay up to date with all of that. If you guys are listening to us on the audio experience on iTunes, rate and review five stars, nothing less. And be sure to head over to YouTube, youtube.com slash time to football. Subscribe to us on there. That's going to do it for this week's episode. It is week 17 of the 2020 NFL season. And Adam Gase is still the head coach of the New York Jets. Enjoy your weekend and I'll see you next week.